Good evening, everybody. Monday morning quarterback, episode 76. Hope you are all having a good start to your week. Monday night football is on. What else could you want <clears throat> to uh, get the week going? So I uh, hope you guys got uh, some racing in last weekend. We got a little bit. Um, fortunately, at Eldora, uh, even with a rain delay Friday, they got the outlaw race and, and silver crown qualifying and all that in. And then uh, Saturday was uh, was relatively dry and everything got in on time. A lot of race cars and a lot of racing to get done uh, in one day. So, uh, And then unfortunately Sunday got a little bit of the quarter midget stuff in and uh, then Mother Nature struck and the races got called right before a main. So too bad for a lot of those kids and families that were there um, put in so much time and effort on the whole national championship season to to just rain out um, right there at the end, but there wasn't wasn't much anybody could do. Um, the amount of rain that we got late Sunday afternoon was was just too much to to overcome. So, but all in all, a great weekend for Team CSI. We got to meet a bunch of our uh, quarter midget dirt customers. We don't get to see those guys a ton throughout the year, and then uh, obviously a fantastic night at the big track for us on Saturday with uh, Tyler Courtney. Um, dominating the midget in the sprint car portion. Clean swept, fast time, heat, and feature win in both uh, midget and sprint car. So he extended his lead in the midget championship and took a massive chunk out of C.J. Leary's lead in the sprint car, cut the uh, lead from uh, over 100 to about 50 now. So with eight races to go, it's anybody's race, and we're hoping to um, to grab another USAC sprint car win, I think. I think we've won five of the last six national sprint car championships, so it'd be cool to win another one. But uh, So tonight, I uh, wanted to obviously answer any questions that anybody has, and then uh, in addition, give a sneak peek to what Kevin has been working so hard on with the latest pit logic update. Uh, I apologize to some of you. Uh, the update's taken a little bit longer than either of us would have wanted, but as we got going... And Kevin uh, was doing the coding and, and everything for it. Just more ideas kept coming. And, and what started off as a, a relatively small and simplistic uh, update to Pit Logic is now going to be this massive uh, update and a lot of really, really cool features. So excited to show you guys uh, some of that. For those of you that are coming to PRI, we still have a couple slots left um, at our shock seminar. So last year I did two. We're only doing one this year. It'll be the day after PRI on Sunday. We'll kick it off at nine in the morning, give everybody uh, breakfast and coffee and juice, um, and talk about everything suspension. So your shocks, springs, torsion bars, uh, bump rubbers, um, and how to better understand your dyno sheets, how to apply that data to um, setups and making better adjustments. And, uh, and so that's something that I really have enjoyed doing. Um, I've done countless seminars like that over the past 10 years, um, some with other folks, some in other areas, and then a few for, for CSI. So this one will be at, uh, at our place here in Brownsburg. And uh, so if you're interested in that, there's only a couple spots left and it will sell out. They always do. So wish we had room for more people. Um, wish we could do more of them, but just time constraints. Uh, we're just going to do that one during PRI, and uh, and we've limited the amount of people because we want to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction, make sure nobody's getting lost and everybody's learning what they need to learn. And we actually have less room here than we did last year because of growth and things that are going on here. Um, we're just, we don't have as much free space to conduct seminars. So um, I will look over here and see if we got any questions from anybody. Rick, uh, hello to you. Uh, doesn't look like there's any questions yet. All right. So I will show you a few screenshots that Kevin sent me, and I'll kind of walk through what, um, what you're looking at here with some of these updates that are coming to Pit Logic um, here in the next week or two. And so the first slide I'm going to show you 
Basically, the home screen will have a different look to it once this uh, update is available for download, and that's because we're adding a bunch of different things. So um, you'll see the the home screen now has um, checklists, tires, parts on there as well. Um, and so then the middle screen that you're seeing, that is um, basically your tire library. So as you would enter a shock into um, your shock library, you do the same thing with the tire. And you can tell it what, uh, what offset wheel it's on, what compound the tire is. And then the condition is basically like how many heat cycles or good, bad, what the condition of the tire is in. And so here on Kevin's, uh, I believe he did uh, numerical for left rears and then uh, letters for right rears. And so then the far screen there, you can see uh, you can sort by stagger. So if you said you wanted to look at seven inches of stagger, it's going to show you every possible combination of seven and above it and below it. And so with that, you can see um, it's going to show you the tire size, the compound, and the wheel offset, as well as the condition of the tire and what combination is going to get you that stagger. So really, really cool, um, big feature. I'm looking forward to using that on my quarter midget stuff when you get everything mounted. And basically in prepping for that, I've just taken, uh, I've gotten decals made uh, in, I like Kevin's methodology here with, uh, numbers for left rears and letters for right rears and just put a little decal on the inside of the wheel so it's easy to identify what that is um, and once you get those loaded up in the app um, you can sort stagger and, and all that good stuff so the next slide I'm going to show you is going to pertain more to how we're going to be able to manage um, our racing equipment better and so the first one is parts and so now you're going to be able to log, uh, I believe, laps, races, or mileage on any number of things. So here he's got his engine, rear end, steering gear, torsion bars. Um, and when you identify what that is in your setup, it's going to automatically be able to log that data for you and how many times you've used it by how many times it's shown up in your setup sheet. Um, so be real handy for when motors are needing fresh end and, and how many nights you got on your torsion bars and etc. Um, the middle screen is kind of a weekly checklist and so you'll be able to download a uh, predefined checklist for your type of race car. So this one uh, maybe is for a sprint car and it'll go through everything we recommend to maintenance on a weekly basis. Um, I believe that'll be editable like anything in PitLogic. If you can edit setups you can probably edit this checklist. Um, and you can, you can check them off here, uh, and I believe they change color from red to green once they've been checked off. And then the far right is um, a PDF download of that checklist. So if you'd prefer to print that off and tape it on the car and then multiple guys checking it off um, as you go, you can do that. If you want to keep a copy of your um, weekly maintenance checklist in your notebook, um, you could do that as well. So... A lot of neat things coming from Pit Logic. Kevin has been busy, busy, busy trying to get all this done, and uh, and I think you can expect this in the next week or two uh, from us. So, any questions pertaining to that and what's coming in this update, or uh, any racing questions? And I see Kevin commented checklists are very editable, which will be awesome because um, some guys might have different preferences as far as what they want to maintain. Um, this is basically. Uh, given to you as a, as a guideline so you can uh, you can always change that as we go along so uh, Dylan from Australia advantages disadvantages to running higher gas pressure in your shocks and his questions for a micro but this is going to go for any type of race car and the easiest way for me to explain this to you is the more gas pressure you run the faster the shocks gonna react and on a hooked up heavy rough racetrack we need our shocks to react quickly because they're seeing higher velocities the car's going faster there's uh, larger loads in the corner um, and so a higher gas pressure will have a better platform and uh, it'll feel more comfortable to the driver now when the track slows down and slicks off um, we would like the shock to react slower try to keep the tire in, in contact with the track longer um, and basically have less spring rate in the shock which will generate more grip so 
Roy, thank you for tuning in. John Randall would like to be able to see two shocks at the same time in pit logic. Uh, Kevin will make a note of that, and um, not exactly sure the easiest way to do that, but somewhere in your library, uh, maybe you could, yeah, you could compare two different shocks at the same time. Um, again, we uh, we certainly appreciate the feedback. Uh, we have. A bunch of things we continue to want to bring to this app uh, it's obviously very labor-intensive on Kevin's side and all of the coding and, and all of that um, but keep coming with the feedback because this platform is just going to continue to grow and, um, and we want to bring you guys everything that that you desire out of the app so um, I get great feedback from from a lot of people on different things with it and uh, and certainly if there's enough demand and we feel it's going to benefit everybody we'll, we'll do our best to get that added so Spencer how much is the app it's $9.99 a month and that gets you pretty much everything you need um, not pretty much it does get you everything you need there are two other versions so for $19.99 a month CSI will manage all of your shop content for you really only worthwhile if you're a CSI customer we can then upload any shock data you request um, from a serial number and uh, <clears throat> and take care of that for you. So you don't have to manually enter the data. It's pretty simple to manually enter the data. If you've only got four shocks, the 999 program is perfect for you. It takes a few minutes of shock um, to enter it. If you're a team like Kloss and Marshall, I saw Tim uh, signed in earlier where they have 40, 50, 60 shocks. It's probably easier for us to enter that data. Um, and then the, the $29.99 a month is if you want us to analyze your setups for you. So weekly you can submit setups to us. We'll take a look at them and give you feedback. Um, but for the $9.99 a month, uh, you get everything in the app. You can download the setups that we have on our website. You can use any of the templates, the gear charts, um, all that stuff. So a lot of value for, for just $10 a month. So. Nothing in racing is cheap, but we feel the app is a, is a really good value at that price. So, um, <laughs> I like Kevin's suggestion. John Randall, you need to buy two phones. <laughs> um, cool. So anybody else that signed in have questions for us, um, we're here to answer. And then also if anybody has any suggestions for topics they would like covered um, during the off-season. So that's typically when we get the largest viewership is in the off-season. And we want to cover topics that are interesting to you guys that tune in every week. Um, I have a couple things planned like off-season checklists and, and things we should be doing in the off-season. Um, but but it's certainly anything you guys want covered, please comment and let us know. <laughs> Tim says it's worth having me enter them. It is. Um, and it's a lot of work to enter them, but it, uh, it's certainly worthwhile to our customers to be able to have it. I can't tell you how many times I'm at the racetrack and a guy's like, hey, where should I set my shocks? And without the dyno sheet, I'm just giving my best guess off memory um, because we build so many shocks, it's impossible to know exactly. And... You know, I know, okay, on a midget, we're typically going to start this many clicks open on the left front, but it varies. Like one one shock might need to be eight open and one might need to be ten. And if you have the app, it's easy for us just to look right on your phone and say, hey, this is where you need to be. Um, and it's super simple. And I'm a big note taker, pen, paper. And so to get me to convert was, was the true test. And I find myself non-stop using it uh, on my, my little guy's quarter midget in the hot shoot, looking at things, um, being able to help customers with, hey, look at I've done this, or we're comparing gears, or it must have been four or five times this weekend I had somebody say, hey, I'm running this gear, and I could easily look up and see what the gear ratio was um, and compare it to, to our notes, so super helpful. Mark, will I be at the Rumble in Fort Wayne again this year? Tentatively plan to, um, and we might drag Hudson up there and race. Um, I'm not sure what classes they're having, but yeah, definitely plan to get up there. Um, I don't think we have anything else going on, and I believe it's a couple days before we have to leave for Tulsa this year, so we should be able to make it, make it up, uh, make it up to the Rumble in Fort Wayne. So. 
anybody else that's tuned in have questions, um, pit logic related, racing related, um, if you want some advice on your fantasy football team, I can do that too. Um, although my team in the CSI league is pretty piss poor this year. I think I'm going to be 0-4 after tonight. But but the Saints won last night, so that's all that matters. And they beat Trevor's Cowboys. So all afternoon, T-Bones uh, heard me singing, Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be Cowboys. So <clears throat> good fun with, uh, with the guys here in the shop in our fantasy football league. Um, but gosh, I have a horrible team this year. So, uh, no other questions. So at the end of the year here, um, we are doing a West Coast swing. So we're going to hit um, the 10,000 to win micro race in Texas, then go from there to um, California for the Hangtown 100, uh, Bakersfield, and then the Silver State Winter National Quarter Midget Race. So looking forward to seeing a bunch of our West Coast customers on that. And then we'll get back in time for PRI. So the season is definitely winding down here. Eric Long, Saints got lucky. Shoot, we don't even have our starting quarterback, and we're, we've won two games. Steve, we're not going to Vegas for the USAC show. Um, the way it plays out and how close it is to Winter Nationals and wanting to do that micro race in Texas, it's just not going to – it's just not in the cards for us to do that. Uh, I think – the Winter Nationals will have probably twice the attendance, and uh, and so that's the one we're going to do. Uh, the people that will be at the USAC one are probably people we've already seen a handful of times this year. So, um, Anything to take away from Four Crown Shockwise? You need big balls to win the Four Crown. That's, that's about the only takeaway I could have. Uh, I don't know if it's just getting older or, or what, but man, sitting in the stands watching these guys that you, you care about go out at El Eldora is not, <clears throat> not anything to take lightly. It's, um, midgets and non-wing sprint cars at Eldora are frightening to watch. So my only takeaway from Eldora is you better have big balls because you're not winning there otherwise. Um, shock wise, uh, there, there was a variety of track conditions, like on Friday night Silver Crown qualifying, it was really hooked up and heavy, and then it was like super, super slick to a curb, and um, you know you had to keep your car free enough to run on the curb, but then it was really slick everywhere else, slick down the straightaways. I don't think from hot laps on anything touched the track, uh, track equipment wise, so it was really slick, and I know they like to see it slow down some. Um, for the non-wing cars there, but, man, it was frightening to watch. Tim, that's a good, uh, that's a good idea. An episode with the drivers explaining why they adjust the shocks to get the feel they want. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. It'd be good to have a couple guys on to, I'm sure there's a difference of opinions there. And then we can maybe cap it off with Rizzy saying why he unhooks the shock cable so I can't adjust the shocks. Uh, no, just kidding. That, that would be a great idea. Um, I'm actually working on a way where we can buzz people in so somebody wouldn't have to come here to the shop at 9 o'clock on a Monday night. And uh, so once I get that ironed out, I'll try to reach out to a couple of our guys to, uh, to make that happen. I like that. Eric, how do you know when too much stagger? Uh, I assume you're referring to um, quarter midgets. And typically for me, when the car is free entry to center, um, that's, that's typically a stagger thing. So if the kid's hands are really still on entry or almost turning to the right on entry, like they're guarding, guarding the car from swapping ends on entry, um, that's kind of a stagger thing. It's just as soon as it peels off down into the corner, it's over-rotating. Um, and really on a quarter midget, you need to try to run as little a stagger as possible in most instances since they're underpowered. Obviously, it has to rotate the corner, so you have to have some stagger, but um, try to run as little as possible. So, Cool. I appreciate all the feedback tonight. Thank you for the questions. Uh, we hope you have a fantastic week. And uh, we look forward to being with you guys next week. Take care, everybody.